Hi everyone, it's me, Emily. Welcome back to Animal Tales. It's time to learn from another one of the coolest animals from the Bible. Today's animal is, well, I tell you what, I'm going to let you guess. Here's a hint. This animal is known as the ship of the desert. A lizard? Nope. Okay, here's another hint. This animal has thick, bushy eyebrows to shield its eyes from the sun. A gorilla? Nope. Okay, one more. This animal can drink up to 40 gallons of water in one sitting and can go up to two months without drinking any water at all. Uh, um, um. Give up? It's a camel. Hi, we're back at Cockles Country Critters with Janice. Janice, who do we have here? This is Humphrey the camel. Now, how old is Humphrey? Humphrey is about a year and three months. Right. We have had Humphrey since he was about three weeks old. We bottle fed him and raised him. So the hump on the back of his back here, what is the that The hump for? on the back of his back is just a big wad of fat and a, a big fluff of hair. So not water? Not water, no. So how much bigger will Humphrey get? Humphrey will get probably feet wise, gosh, 12 feet maybe. I mean, he'll, wow. he's tall. He'll be tall. He'll be a big riding camel later. Wow. So is there any way that he could fit through this? Wait, that's the eye of the, the eye of a needle. I don't think so. Doesn't look like there's any way. No way. She really didn't know what to think about that question about a camel fitting through the eye of a needle, did she? That question actually came from something Jesus said. He said it would be easier for a camel to fit through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter heaven. Why do you think Jesus said that? Well, you're going to learn all about that and the story of the rich young ruler today in your lesson. You're going to learn how important it is to make sure God is number one in your life, above everything. I better let you go. This is Emily, and I'll see you next time on Animal Tales. Everybody, it's me. It's the SKI to the double T L E S. Skittles in the hizzy, and I'm ready to say, What's up today? We are talking about putting God at the number one spot in our life. So every time somebody asks you, What's up? you tell them, I love God more than all of my stuff. The rich young ruler, he wanted to follow Jesus but he was not able to let go of his money and his stuff in order to do it. We can't be like that, y'all. We cannot let our money, our possessions, and our stuff be more important to us than God. That ain't right. So anytime, I mean anytime, somebody asks you, what's up, you tell them. I love God more than all of my stuff. And that right there is what's up. I got a rainbow of flavor, and I'm living for my savior, Skittles out, baby. Hey guys, this is Cynthia. Um, this morning I'm going to be bringing you the Bible story from the book of Matthew chapter 19, and it's about the rich young ruler. Today's Bible story involves a camel, and that is why it is found in our series of animal tales. So the, the rich young ruler wanted to know how he could receive eternal life. And he approached Jesus and asked him, Jesus, how or what must I do to have eternal life, to receive eternal life? And so he was obviously ready and committed to God. And he was ready to put his faith in God. And Jesus answered him, well, in order to have eternal life, you must obey my commandments. And so the young man didn't miss a beat. He responded to Jesus and he said, well, I've done all of these things since I was a little boy. I followed all of these rules. What else must I do? 
You see, this young man knew that there must be more, more to loving Jesus, more to following God than just following a set of rules. And so he had been doing this all of his life and he knew there was something more that he needed to do. He just still felt empty inside. And so Jesus knew this young man had kept all of the commandments in the scripture, but he also knew that there was something this young man loved very, very much. You see, too much, he liked too much. He loved it too much, in fact. And you see, this young man in, is known in the Bible as a rich young ruler. This man was very rich, so he had everything you can possibly imagine. Well, back in the day, you know, uh, jewels, probably a big place to live, probably servants giving him everything that he needed and wanted. And so, God knew, Jesus knew, right, that he had a lot of money and he loved his money so much. And Jesus said, sell everything that you have and give it to the poor. Everything that you have. Imagine if Jesus said that to you. Sell everything you have, all your toys, your Xbox, uh, video games, all the girls, all your Barbies, LOLs, uh, your cell phone, just everything that you have in your possession, sell it and give it whatever you get from that, give it to the poor. And so this man kind of thought about it. It's very difficult to do, to give up everything that you have, everything that you love, and give it to the poor, people you don't even know. It's kind of difficult to do. But this uh, rich young ruler had a decision to make. So, after thinking about it and thinking about it, he thought to himself, I have too much to give up. I can't do it. So this is what happened. He decided to walk away. He walked away sad because he didn't want to give anything away, any of his possessions, his money, his luxuries, his lifestyle. He wasn't willing to give anything up, any of that up. And so it's not like Jesus really wanted him to be poor. Jesus just wanted him to be committed. Right? And see, Jesus wanted to know, how, how far are you willing to go for me? Right? And so, Jesus wanted him to be willing to, willing to put God ahead of his money. And really, that's what we all have to do. We have to put God first. Everything that we do has to involve God, and we have to put him first in everything we do. Okay? And so... That was a really sad thing. It was a sad thing that he walked away from Jesus, seeing him face to face and having him been able to shake his hand, hug him, talk to him face to face. He walked away from Jesus, you know? And so Jesus really wanted him to be part of his kingdom, to have eternal life. But that didn't happen that day. And so, he missed out on eternal life. This rich young ruler wasn't willing to give everything he had to be with Jesus forever. And so Jesus turned to his disciples and said, I tell you the truth, it is easier for a camel to go through an eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. And so what did Jesus mean by that? I think what he meant is that Sometimes we have so much and we pay attention so much to it that it becomes our life and we say we love it and we can't let go of it and we tend to kind of put back uh, the things of God and we forget about God and we just spend our time doing other things. And so it's really hard when you love something, it's really hard to take your focus off of it, right? And so I think what he meant, it's that it's going to be something difficult for you to do. But all in all, you can decide to just maybe put it away for later and focus on God. Read your Bible, right? And so this is what happened. Um, when, you, when you love your money, possessions, power, and popularity, 
it's going to destroy your relationship with God because you're going to be paying attention to those things and not really focusing on God, right? So instead, what we should do, instead of wanting to be with friends all the time or wanting to uh, watch television all the time or um, just doing other things that are not involving God or putting God first, we should move him to the number one spot in our life, right? We should pray about everything. We should um, read our Bible a little bit more, just a little bit more. And that is why we have our power verse, our Bible verses for the week. Okay, and I want you to focus on that. And I will see you guys next Sunday. Good day, mates. It's me, the scripture hunter. I'm out here in the wild doing some hunting, but not just any hunting. I'm hunting for scripture. You know, God's holy word. I know it's around here somewhere. Oh, look, I found it. It's, it's hiding on that animal over there. Looks like I'm gonna have to wrestle him for it. Here I go. Would you look at that? It's a power verse. And the power verse for today is, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. Matthew 19, 24. Wow, that was an amazing power verse. Now, I need all my boys to stand up with me and say the power verse on the count of three. Ready? One, two, three. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. Matthew 19, 24. Great job, boys. You sit down, girls stand up with me, and say the power verse with the scripture hunter on the count of three. Ready, girls? One, two, three. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. Matthew 19, 24. Great job. You can be seated. You know, that power verse reminds me of a time when I really struggled with wanting to be rich. Before I hunted scripture, I used to hunt the polka dot of weevil. Have you ever seen one? You haven't, you know why? They're really rare and they're very expensive. And I had someone come up to me the other day and say, you know, if you stop hunting scripture and start hunting weevils for me, I'll give you all the money you can handle. And I'll tell you kids, that was tempting. It's very easy to want money more than anything else in the world. But I realized there's nothing more important than loving God. And so I stuck to hunting scripture because I love him way more than anything money could buy. And I hope you will too. So everyone stand to your feet right now and let's say that scripture one more time. You ready? One, two, three. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. Matthew 19, 24. Crikey, that was great. You can have a seat now. Well, kids, Looks like that does it for me. I gotta get going and doing what I do best, and that is hunting scripture. So, until next time, if you see a scripture that needs a good hunter, just call on your favorite mate from down under. <laughs>